Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, let's start immediately saying congratulations to Napoli for winning the Scudetto, a well-deserved Scudetto, on the field they were stronger than all the competition, including and especially more than Juventus, now I did it two years ago for Inter, I did it last year for Milan, of course I'm pissed off and I don't want to congratulate other teams because that means that Juventus lost, but anyway this is what I chosen on the channel to congratulate the other winners, that I'm pissed off, that I'm jealous, or not I put that aside and I congratulate the other teams and then I know that on the channel every year it's the same the people are telling me Juventini Beppe but why are you keep doing it because we never receive any compliment when we are winning something and if we are looking at the history of Juve we can speak about examples of winning things without any team on earth except of Pescara and Sampdoria and I really, these are real examples from the archives that are congratulating us. For the rest, nobody. Well, guys, this is exactly the same thoughts that Juventus admin on Twitter, in the Italian Twitter, wrote yesterday as soon as Napoli won. They went out with an Italian tweet that said, given the many compliments that we received in recent years, well, we can't hide ourselves. Congratulations to Napoli for their third Scudetto in their history. Well, this tweet was seen as controversial by the anti-Juve people that said, why are you going with these kind of ironic sarcasm tweets? It's better than that you say nothing. And then you had the Juventini that were proud about that tweet. Well, I am proud because for so many years, we were the only one that congratulated the other ones. But when we won, nobody, nobody was congratulating Juve. Well, Juventus is continuing with their philosophy. Congratulations to the other ones. But we don't forget. We know that nobody is congratulating Juve when we win. Hopefully we can win really soon. Well, I would love to win the Europa League and see if other teams will yes or no congratulate us. But that's another story. Let's speak about Napoli in that video. Let's speak also about Il Cinque Maggio, the 5th of May. Look at that beautiful shirt. And let's speak about the future. There is some Mercato talk also on that Juve. So I would kindly ask you, if you want to, a maximum of like. Let me know also in the comment what you think about congratulating other teams. And then I want to speak about a lot of other things. So subscribe to the channel. We go with the front page of Gazzetta dello Sport. Napoli in Paradiso. Napoli in Paradise. And that's actually a reality. They won and they deserve to win. And in a way, even if I'm not a big fan of the fan base of Napoli supporters, well, they, I'm happy. I'm happy because I am also someone from the south. I come from Sicily. So I know how passionate Sicilian, Napoli fans, Calabresi fans, the people of the South are, especially if you are waiting since 33 years. Well, I'm happy to see joy in people. Of course, I would be more happy if it was Juventus, but I'm happy in a way that I see these beautiful movements of joy. Tutto Sport, I visto Maradona. Did you see Maradona with a picture of Oshiman? Because yes, he's the top scorer of Serie A with 22 goals. Yesterday, his goal for the draw against Udinese made sure that they won it after the last time that they won. And it was 33 years ago with Maradona that unfortunately is not here to see the new Napoli winning it because he passed away. Look, also there, beautiful images for Napoli that will have new heroes that they can paint the city with. Well, when did I understand that Napoli could win the Scudetto? Especially not before the end of the Mercato, because you remember, in my strange ranking, I didn't see them even in top four. I said, wait, let's wait that the Mercato finished before giving a final one. Well, I would never have thought that they could win the Scudetto before the start of the season. Not even the start of the season told me that uh, they would win the Scudetto. It's true that they had a perfect Mercato, Farazkeglia, uh, Kim in Jay, uh, an Aussie man that after the fight with Spalletti came back much stronger after his injury. Well, they uh, had a Raspadori and so on and so on. Simeone, great mercato, fantastic mercato for them, but it was not yet enough. But when did I really start believing that they could do it? Well, after the few games, after them winning, I remember that Spalletti is a coach that has always in his history at Roma, at Udinese, at the Inter, but also at Napoli next, last year, fantastic, beautiful boost starts. And after a certain moment in November, December, they have that downfall. They have a bit that downfall where it's really difficult for Spalletti and his team to remotivate them to start back to go in positive streak. And that's where probably they miss the Scudetto. And then when they start to be really nervous, 
when they have the pressure that they can do something like last year when for one day they went over Milan well that's where mentally they collapsed we also saw it losing a Scudetto in the hotel do you remember this story in 1718 well this year with the World Cup in the middle I said hmm a perfect Mercato changing a lot of ex-glories of Napoli that never won anything with new players that are working immediately Kvaratskhelia the big surprise even if I told you before the season started, pay attention to that guy that can really be the surprise of uh, of the season. And in fact, he became the big surprise. Well, with the World Cup there, I said there will be a big stop. Not a lot of players will go in the World Cup. That means that Spalletti can have a new start of the season, like a new summer training, a summer camp, where again he can start from the beginning with an ultra boost. And let's see if that moment where they have that downfall will be cancelled. Well, we see it, it happened, and that's also, I, according to me, a big, big part of the win of Napoli. Avoiding that downfall and restarting with an ultra boost like Spalletti is a real master in. Then... Of course, if you're looking, I told you about not a lot of players traveling to the World Cup, being able to remain there, to continue to train. If Juventus, the only possible candidate with that has a really disaster season, and on top of that, when they were playing that big game that Napoli won 5-1, you take away 15 points from them, you totally destroy them. Well, they had absolutely no competition anymore. And that's where mentally, I believe, they were totally strong because they could allow themselves to lose 4-0 against Milan without any consequence. Again, congratulations to them. Unfortunately, we have to speak about a lot of fake news of yesterday or things that were really strange but also really sad moments and then we will go and speak about Juventus of course so remain on the channel the first really strange things is uh, the biggest Napoli fan Mario yesterday he tweeted that in a few hours when it will be official well they would have been able and proud to put three stars above their crest so maybe someone should say to Mario that it's not like this that it's worth they need seven more Scudetti to have their first star but anyway fake news that some supporters maybe they don't know because they are not really used to win what is really strange is that yesterday it went viral and it's still online you can see it with big accounts like Julien Lorenz like Serie A account the English Serie A account that showed fantastic beautiful party in Napoli with a lot of fireworks all that pink in the air was really really beautiful and you can fall for it because yesterday we saw it with real images on Sky Sport Italia for example that all the city was going with fireworks the problem is that a lot of people were saying look nobody like Napoli can celebrate a Scudetto because these images should make you fall in love with Napoli with football with everything around it well the problem is that these images were already online since more than three years actually they're speaking about the celebration of split football that were uh, actually made in uh, Croatia and not in Napoli so beautiful scenes but unfortunately not the real one what is really sad is yesterday that the supporters of Napoli they wanted to celebrate they invaded the field of Udinese because they were not playing at home and it finished in a big fight with the ultras from Udinese well am I a big fan of uh, fan bases celebrating and invading the pitch when they are not at home absolutely not but did it happen in the past of course it happened look at last year with Milan winning their Scudetto in the Mape stadium of Sassuolo they did exactly the same unfortunately yesterday the ultras from Udinese were not accepting it and they went in with violent acts on the field because they said it's absolutely not respectful guys this is for me unacceptable let's not forget that it is a game it is sport it is passion it is joy and even if i'm not happy that napoli won the scudetto let people enjoy let people celebrate you know that it's a scudetto you know that it's a moment of joy just look around close your eyes and let people enjoy let share joy because one day maybe Udinese in five years in ten years will have a team like Leicester that is able to win a Scudetto let and they will maybe not be able to do it at home let people celebrate because these act or vines are going too much too big too far and this is something I don't recognize myself Spalletti will be confirmed but there is another one that could potentially go away from Napoli and it is Giuntoli we spoke about him since a few months but always in pair with other competitors Rossi from Sassuolo Massara from Ma Milan and so on we are speaking about the director of sports sporting director for Juventus well everyone is starting speaking more and more and more about Giuntoli and yesterday the Marzio 
twice, and I heard it myself live on television, he said that uh, potentially Giundoli could go to Juventus because Juventus is really making the court to the sporting director of Napoli that did really a beautiful miracle there. Why am I believing Di Marzo? I'm not believing him when he's doing the predicted lineup, but on that one, yes, because Di Marzo is a journalist that is really close to Napoli in terms of affection in terms of people he knows there and when he's speaking about Napoli listen to him I don't confirm of course that Juntoli will become the sporting director but the voices are real are there Juventus is thinking about it let's go to Juventus after a second because I know I need to rectify the first page of Corriere dello Sport that is saying Napoli campione inchinatevi what does that mean Napoli champion bend the knee well no i will not bend the knee uh, that's maybe a bit too far i said congratulations but bending the knee no because today it's 5 maggio the 5th of may and like buffon said when we won the scudetto a few years ago 5 maggio godo ancora 5 maggio 5th of may i'm still enjoying why because on the 5th of may 2002 i repeat that in the afternoon before the kickoff of all the games that were simultaneous at that moment juventus was not first they were second with 68 points while inter 69 and roma 67 at the end of a fantastic day an epic day probably the most beautiful scudetto in history of juventus well juventus was champion of italy how beating 2-0 udinese away from home Udinese also there again Udinese is not the first time that they see a team becoming champion of Italy but Roma won as well so Roma became second but Inter after leading 1-0 after leading 2-1 where well, they lost 4-2 Guys, one of the most beautiful celebrated Scudetto ever. Even better, honestly, than the one of 2011-12. This Scudetto is fantastic. It's an epic one. If you didn't yet, please try to inform yourself because it's a pity that you were not able to, or some of you, were not able to experience it live. But go back in history and watch it because it's fantastic. But now there is a population of Bianconeri that are waiting, waiting for Juve waiting also to celebrate because it's nice to say congratulations to the other ones but also we we want to celebrate again what do we need for that heart and grinta when subito immediately not from next season immediately because i repeat you we have two games in Europa League and potentially three if we arrive to the final and we want to win it. It is an objective for Juventus. We want to celebrate. We want to lift a trophy in the air. What are we missing probably? Well, leaders and that firework. That firework that we saw yesterday at Napoli, but we want that firework inside of us to say, let's go. Let's go and without stops anymore. It will not be with Dusan Vlaovic, Chiesa and Pogba probably, or at least for the rest of the season. I mean... Today, Marco Guidi from Gazzetta dello Sport is probably giving false hope to the Juventini, saying now Max Allegri he has his three stars back and he's ready for the end of the season with Europa League and also the objective to remain in the top four of the competition. Well, Dusan, he was in a really dark hole before the goal of Lecce. We are waiting for him to be to confirm himself, to have that confidence for more than just one game. Chiesa, mentally, he is not at 100% and Pogba, physically not. Max is not expecting them to change the rest of the season because he said it. Pogba will probably not even see him 90 minutes in a row this season. So, Gazzetta dello Sport, stop with giving false hope, but maybe Barbieri will be one that will contribute because we know with, with De Cilio out, Barbieri can be the one. And with Sule that will be out for the rest of the season because he has been called up for the under 20 World Cup in Argentina well there are some names that can potentially come again in that first team Compagnon, Sekulov or maybe even Yildiz the three of them are on the waiting list to understand who will take the spot of Sule for that end of the season for next year for the people that wait and think already about next season well apparently it will be without Juan Cuadrado because yesterday Monblano but also Nicolo Schira they confirmed that uh, they had some talks with the management of Cuadrado and uh, they shaked hands saying okay it was fine eight fantastic seasons together but it's over we will not renew the contract of course it has to be confirmed by Juventus but the anticipation of going that direction we will go back and we will take time to speak about the eighth season of Cuadrado at Juventus in another video. One that is on the words of everyone, and I told you we'll speak about Mercato today. I don't remember if I asked you to put a maximum of like, to subscribe to the channel, if 
please do it now. But uh, there is one, Pau Torres. Not the first time that he's linked with Juventus. He was already last year, then we gave up. There is a, a beautiful money there to have Pau Torres. 50 million euro, it's a lot. And I don't believe in signing players today or finding agreements for 50 million euro without knowing if yes or no Juventus will participate to European competition. What I believe in is that Juventus is informing themselves to be not unprepared with the people that are there now, not with June Tolly, but with the people that are taking care of the sporting side. Pau Torres, is he on the list? Yes, he is. And I'm sure that he's actually making Juventini dream a lot. And I would dream to have him. I believe that he could be a fantastic pair together with Bremer. But I believe that we have to be patient. Patient, but already keeping an eye because Juventus is starting to move to monitor like Pau Torres. We are also monitoring someone else. Uh, Mazraoui from Bayern Munich. He could be a fantastic fullback, especially a right fullback, without Quadrado, because he wants playing time that is not receiving a lot this year at Bayern Munich. If he leaves, we know that between Bayern Munich and Juventus with Saliamic, there are already some open talks. We saw it with uh, uh, Douglas Costa in the past, with De Ligt recently, and so on and so on. One that we have to pay attention for, a Bomba, launched by Romeo Agresti, is Ealing Jr. that is requesting some playing time. There were already some interest from the Premier League, Chelsea, his ex-club, but also Newcastle, two teams that do not care about money. They are on the player. That doesn't mean that he will leave. He extended his contract until 2025. But listen, listen and pay attention to that. But uh, the people that will be there for the future, and that's the end of the video, will be Fagioli and Miretti. We didn't speak enough about these two. We are speaking about the future, but these guys are already the present. And VAR will not be able to cancel all the future goals of our future stars on the field. Miretti and Fagioli hugging each other. This time it was cancelled, but I can guarantee you that with these two guys, and they will not go alone anymore, they will remain at Juventus, we will have some bright, beautiful years. And hopefully going back and celebrating a Scudetto. And instead of us congratulating the other ones, maybe hoping to receive congratulations for the other teams. And if we don't receive them when we win, who cares? We will congratulate ourselves between Juventini. Grazie, forza. Juve.